everyone. Welcome to the Ajay tutorial. In this video, we are going to discuss on how to browse SharePoint site and download file or even search a particular file there. There are various ways to browse a SharePoint site and search a particular file and we can download that. This is possible because of the APIs provided by Microsoft. And these graph APIs can help us to browse and locate the file in a site. There are multiple options to do that. Today we are going to discuss on uh, on two options. One is through Function App, another in Data Factory. The Function App is a lightweight computing service provided by Azure, and it is very cost-effective solution for finding uh, the file and downloading the file from the uh, SharePoint site. Whereas Data Factory pipeline is uh, is a bit costly as compared to Function App because every pipeline run uh, a cost. So we need to decide which one to use uh, in order to browse or download a file. Various scenarios where each can be used. So one example I can come up with is that if you are, if you have a particular file search operation uh, at a particular time interval, let's say. We have a scenario that be every uh, every four hours we need to search a particular file in a SharePoint site, and if I find, then I need to download it all files, and we expect that everything should be completed in 10 minutes time. Uh, then Functional would be the, the, the other option to go with. But if we have a workflow where it is dependent on some other action, and it is uh, download file browsing a file is part of a complete workflow in that case we have to go for data factory pipeline and there we have two options either we call functional from the data factory by passing parameter uh, the the file name and it will search and download file or we can completely write all the code in the data factory uh, without using functional so these are two options uh, and to summarize a function app is reliable a lightweight computing service and we expect it should be completed in 10 minutes time and uh, it is cost effective solution whereas data factory pipeline uh, we can either use function app or we can use pipeline to do that so in this tutorial we are going to use data factory as uh, as the one which i was uh, explaining it is downloading a file is part of a workflow so that means we have a workflow where downloading file is just part of the workflow so there are some prerequisites uh, in order to do it. Uh, first is uh, create a service principle. We need to open Azure Active Directory and register an application. Create a secret uh, and then add the secret to the key vault. And we need to provide the uh, service principle the uh, access to the SharePoint site. So we need to select the uh, application registration. Go to API permission, add a permission, and uh, select microsoft apis microsoft graph and we click select application runtime and that's the place where we need to give um, this uh, sharepoint access as you can see here uh, sharepoint uh, read uh, sharepoint writer full control we need to provide to this service principle so that service principle when we use it can go and browse the site this has to be done irrespective of option we go for either either we are going for function app or data factory pipeline but this step is common for both ways to do that now in the data factory pipeline uh, we need to first create a web activity and the web activity is though used uh, to connect to the SharePoint site so we'll provide the SharePoint site name uh, to the uh, to the graph API and we we'll provide the service principle which we used, which we created earlier step. And uh, the this we need to refer to the key vault in order to get the keys of the service principle. Then once we have the uh, SharePoint site connection, then we need to find the SharePoint ID, site ID. So the next uh, we need to create a variable where we are going to assign uh, the SharePoint site ID to a variable so that we can multiple steps uh, in the following multiple steps we can refer the uh, site id assigned to the variable so i get the drives and then once uh, you have the list of drives uh, we can filter out the drive which we are looking for 
because the serpent side hierarchy is the site, then drive, then the directory, subdirectory, and the file names. And there are the various properties of the file names are there. Be two scenarios where we know, know the file path that means the directory, subdirectory, and the file name, the exact location we know. We can go and get the file downloaded. That is one option. The other option is that we do not know the uh, directory and subdirectory. We just we just know some uh, properties of the file. So in this example, uh, I have given entity ID as the property which we know, but we do not know the file name. Similarly, there may be a scenario you have that you want to have uh, the list of all files uh, where the the date would modified uh, date would be greater than particular date so in that case we can search uh, the list of files uh, which uh, modified data greater than a particular date and this will give us the list of files as output so those file names we can just uh, use a loop uh, if there are multiple files uh, then we can have a loop and under each loop we need to pass the uh, the file name and we can go for a download so uh, once we have that uh, there uh, output of the file list when we search for it there will be uh, multiple properties of the files the file name uh, download url file path uh, we should not use the file path uh, as we can't use the file path to download the file we have to use the download url property of the file so that we need to set into a variable and then we can download it so in the copy activity uh, we have to use the source as a HTTP link service. So the source data should, should be HTTP and the link service should be configured by link like this anonymous authentication as we are authenticating by the service principal which is has access to the SharePoint site and uh, When we give the SharePoint site, it is also needed the SharePoint site administrator should provide access to the uh, to the service principal uh, in the serpent domain serpent site domain but once we configure the data set and then copy activity will uh, connect to the source and the thing should be binary uh, just because we are copying the blob we do not know what uh, it is the extension of the file so the file will be downloaded to uh, in this case we are using uh, data lake so this is the final uh, pipeline look uh, so first step is uh, to get the serpent site id and then we need to uh, refer that uh, ID in multiple places, so we need to add that details to a variables, and then we need to get drives. So it lists out all the drives uh, available on the site. There be to filter a particular drive there, and uh, that that's how it, it will uh, filter out the drive which we are looking for. And then it will go to the uh, next condition is the there is condition if we know the file and file path, uh, then we can go for that or in case we do not know the file uh, name but we know we are going to search the the file property based on file property so uh, so that's the reason that if condition if we know the file name then go for the directly go to this directory subdirectory and get the file if we do not know the file name and we are searching based on entity id or any other property other than the file name uh, or the modified date then we have to go for the search option so in this case if the first one is such as the file where we do not know the file name and file path exactly uh, so we need to search for the file and get the file details and download it but this the uh, next option is that we, we know the file path our file name so we can go and download so uh, here the, uh, apart from the drive the SharePoint API provides a list so if that's the case we can get the list from the SharePoint site as not necessarily all the data is stored in a file in the SharePoint site it is also available there is also options available where we can create list and uh, the end user can update the list in SharePoint site if that's the case we have to uh, replace drive with the list so in that way the same procedure should be followed but we just need to change uh, drive to list so in that way we can get the list information and we can download that uh, from the SharePoint site uh, hope 
uh, you enjoyed the video uh, thanks for watching uh, please uh, do like and comment do like and share thank you